60 Minutes Rewind. In the history of spaceflight, only four entities have launched a space capsule into orbit and successfully brought it back to the Earth. The United States, Russia, China, and Elon Musk. Mr. Musk is a wealthy internet entrepreneur who has vowed to revolutionize space exploration by bringing down the astronomical costs. And that can't happen fast enough for NASA, which retired the shuttle last summer and now has to pay its old rival Russia to fly American astronauts into space. Musk is one of the contenders vying for a NASA contract to build America's next manned spacecraft, a contest he believes he has the right stuff to win. When the final shuttle mission ended last July, for the first time in three decades, the United States had no way to launch astronauts into space. It was the end of one era and the beginning of another. Instead of NASA designing the next manned spacecraft, the White House decided that private industry should design, build, and fly it, opening space to commercial development. One of the companies vying for that contract is SpaceX. Elon Musk is the founder and CEO. Is what we are experiencing at this moment in time the turning point in man's reach for space, going from governments to private companies like yours? I think we're at the dawn of a new era, and, and it's, it's, I think it's going to be very exciting. What we're hoping to do with SpaceX is to push the envelope and provide uh, a reason for people to be excited and inspired to be human. Musk is 40 years old, a naturalized American citizen, and reportedly worth nearly $2 billion. He isn't your typical corporate CEO. As a teenager, he wrote computer games in his native South Africa before immigrating to the U.S. and to Silicon Valley, where he was one of the most successful Internet entrepreneurs, the co-founder of PayPal. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elon Musk! Despite a chorus of skeptics, Musk built a car company called Tesla that turns out 5,000 high-end all-electric cars a year. Another Musk company sells solar power systems. But his lifelong passion is space. And when eBay bought PayPal in 2002, Musk started looking for ways to launch his new fortune into orbit. I went to uh, Russia to look at buying um, a refurbished ICBM, which is a very trippy experience. Uh, it was very bizarre. Um, and when I tell people that, they feel like, what? <laughs> Musk made three trips to Russia trying to buy an intercontinental ballistic missile called the Dnieper. His plan was bizarre. Put a greenhouse on the rocket, land it on Mars, and beam back the pictures. It'll get people really excited, and that would recharge human space exploration. That, just, that was my ri original idea. You just wanted to get people interested in space again? Yes, yes. Capture the imagination? Yes, that, that was the idea. Turns out the Dnieper was so expensive, his idea never flew. So Musk decided that the only way to get an affordable rocket was to build it himself and he started SpaceX. The odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Oh, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. How much of your personal fortune have you poured into this? A uh, hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars yes. into something that you did not believe would work at the beginning. Yes. Musk truly believes that low-cost space exploration is essential to the survival of mankind. I think it's important that humanity become a multi-planet species. I think most people would agree that a future where we are space-faring civilization um, is inspiring and exciting um, compared with one where we are forever confined to Earth until some eventual extinction event. You know, that, that's really why I started SpaceX. SpaceX is housed in a sprawling factory near Los Angeles where fuselages for Boeing 747s used to be built. From its beginning 10 years ago, its goal has been revolutionary change in rocket and spacecraft manufacturing. Now, tell me, what's that big piece right up there? 
Um, that's the second stage of a Falcon 9 rocket. Instead of multiple companies building parts all across the country, SpaceX builds most of its rockets and spacecraft in-house, based on Musk's belief that it's more efficient and lowers costs. 1,400 engineers and skilled technicians work here, building engines, rockets, space capsules, creating mostly from scratch the thousands of components that are the guts of a rocket. So what that means is uh, raw metal comes in and then we build the engines, uh, the airframe, the electronics, and we integrate all of that together. Uh, and, and that's all done more or less under one roof. Metal comes in one end of this factory. Yeah. Spaceships come out the other. Yes. Final assembly takes place at the Cape Canaveral launch pad. If the margin's there and we don't then have margin to the fourth power, um, yes. then it's fine. Musk has college degrees in business and no, physics, I, 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 but like SpaceX the, uh, is his first venture in aerospace. He bills himself as chief designer and chief technology officer. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You're self-taught? Yeah. Well, well self-taught, yes, meaning um, I, didn't, I don't have an aerospace degree. So how, how did you go about acquiring the knowledge? Well, uh, I, like I said, I read a lot of books, talked to a lot of people, and, and have a great team. His team is a mixture. There are newcomers, mostly 30-something engineers, some of them straight out of college, and then there are the skilled technicians and aerospace veterans. Former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman spent three months aboard the space station and flew on one of the final shuttle missions. He was brought in to help oversee the company's manned space work. You know, I'm curious, you have so much background in engineering. You could have easily gotten a job at Boeing, or at Lockheed, but you came here. If you had a chance to go back in time and work with Howard Hughes when he was creating TWA, if you had a chance to be there at that moment when it was the dawn of a brand new era, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, that's, that's why I'm here. And that's why most of the engineers we met are here. Building spaceships is the chance of a lifetime. If you reach the point of having a successful manned flight, what will you have proven? We're not doing it to prove anything. <laughs> uh, you know, we know it can be done. We're just trying to do it a little bit differently, a little bit faster, and to push the, push the fence a little bit farther out. And then we can all go, I mean, I want to go into space. I assume most people here do as well. <laughs> How many want to ride? Uh-huh, okay. Everybody <laughs> wants to go. I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> First stage Four, engine sequence initiated. Three, two, one. Four years after starting, SpaceX rolled out its first rocket, an unmanned booster called the Falcon 1. Falcon has cleared the tower. But the first three test flights failed to reach orbit. Uh, we are hearing from the launch control center that there has been an anomaly on the vehicle. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. It turned out that the third failure was caused by a two-second glitch in the timing. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone out at that point? We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. This is a tricky business. Tricky. <laughs> yeah, the, with, with, yeah, I wish it wasn't so hard. Um. <laughs> the story will continue after this. In 2010, SpaceX tested a larger, more powerful nine-engine rocket called the Falcon 9 and an unmanned cargo capsule known as Dragon. It was the first privately developed rocket designed to carry cargo and eventually astronauts to the space station. MVAC ignition confirmed. 3.2 kilometers per second. In its first test flight, the Dragon capsule performed flawlessly. 
orbiting the Earth twice before splashdown in the Pacific, the first time a private company had launched and recovered its own spacecraft. And this is a historic spacecraft. It is, yeah. We came across the Dragon capsule while Musk was showing us around. Sure. You know what I noticed about your cargo ship is that it has windows. Um, yeah, absolutely. The windows are there uh, in case uh, there's an astronaut on board who wants to look out. But <laughs> people don't put windows in cargo ships. That's right, exactly. <laughs> So um, what that tells me is that this was never intended to be only a cargo ship. No, no the uh, Dragon was always designed to carry astronauts. Musk says a manned version of the Dragon capsule will be safer than the space shuttle and a lot cheaper. Engineers are already designing escape rockets, life support equipment, and computer guidance systems. They were studying seating for seven when we were there. Do you believe that your rocket will be the next American rocket to take an astronaut into space. I believe that is the most likely outcome, yes. That sort of confidence has not exactly endeared him to the space establishment or to his competitors. There are people who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. Well, I, I suppose that's true of anyone. How can anyone know what they don't know? <laughs> But when uh, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. He's done it in partnership with NASA, which has given SpaceX technical advice and a contract worth up to $1.6 billion, mostly for 12 cargo flights to the space station. But SpaceX's lack of experience bothers some NASA legends, like Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong and Gene Cernan. They've testified to Congress that the Obama administration's drive to commercialize space could compromise safety and eventually cost the taxpayers. Now is the time to overrule this administration's pledge to mediocrity. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. President Obama made his support clear when he visited SpaceX's launch site just before Falcon 9's first test flight. As this animation shows, Elon Musk's next flight will be far more ambitious, carrying cargo all the way to the space station. It was scheduled to fly in February, but it's taken longer than expected to perfect the flight software. The flight will be a complicated rendezvous with a space station that is moving 17,000 miles an hour, 240 miles above the Earth. Okay, so it looks like our burn performance is nominal. In the SpaceX mission control, flight simulations are continuing. And if all goes well, SpaceX will begin routine space station cargo deliveries later this year. But the big prize is winning the NASA contract to build America's next manned spacecraft. And Elon Musk is facing stiff competition. I'm probably not the guy that most people would bet on. Um, <laughs> you, Who wins? It's, it's, it's like a, a little kid fighting a bunch of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> Usually the sumo wrestlers win. We're, you know, we're a little scrappy company. Every now and again, the little scrappy company wins. And I, I, I think this will be one of those times.